Hip hop hits. Period. It's hip hop nation. It's DJ Envy Susan and Live. It's the People's Choice. DJ Envy got a special hey, guest in the building. Jeezy. What it do? What it does? I seen you early this morning. You gotta be tired, bro. Hey man, sleep for the week, man. We sleep when we die, baby. You know we grinding right now. Absolutely. The new album comes out October 28th. Believe that. Trap or die. Trap or die three. Now why'd you do Trap or Die Three? Why don't you continue with the church in the streets? Oh man, we back on we, we back on that we back on that bag music, man. We back on that grind. We mm-hmm. back on that grizzle. Uh you know we got to let things sort themselves out. But as far as me, I just feel like the message gotta be about, you know, running that bag up, man, and getting out here and, and, and getting to it. You know what I mean? That's the space I'm in. Right. With with church in the streets, it's, it, it, church in the streets, it felt like it was ahead of its time. It felt like it, it, it that needed to come right now with right, everything right, that's going right, on with the political right, scene right. and the, you know, the the, the police brutality right, and the right, racism and everything right, like right. that. I mean, but you know, one thing about it is there. So it's like, you know, the the, the blueprint already been laid. So it's just like, you know, when, when you when you need to go back and listen to that, I mean, you can. But you know, now, you know, in the meantime, why are you going through the realness and all mm-hmm. these? You know, police brutality and right. all the racism. I'm still gonna give you some motivation and music to go get your bag up. Right. Because that's what you're killing when you're killing with success. Mm. You know what I mean? Because they wanna see you down. We wanna be up. We're gonna stay up. We ain't gonna never lose. You know what I mean? So that's what it's really about. You know, we gotta have that motivation of music at all times. And I think Church in the Streets is what it was, is body work about what was going on. But um, Trapper Dot 3 is bringing everything back full circle and let them know we back. Right now, what's the motivation for you to continue to do music? Because you're right. successful, you put out classic albums, right, you got, right, you got right. great investments. Right, you got a, a your, your son is he's he's older now. He's, yeah, yeah, he's good. He's up here with me. He's moving around, doing his thing. You know, touching the town. You know, pumping his clothing. How line. old is he? He's old enough. He's old enough. <laughs> hey, we'll, we'll put, <laughs> put him out there. <laughs> yeah. So, so what, what's, the, what's the motivation? I mean, just, you know, I love what I do. This is what I'm good at. You know, it's like almost being a basketball player. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's almost like being a, you know, great at ball. You know, that's what you get to flex in front of the ladies with. You know, they're right. in the gym and see you do your thing. Like, you really, you know, if you're into, you know, weightlifting, you know, that's that's your thing. This is my thing. You know, this right. is what I'm good at. And this is what I love. This is my stress, you know, my, my stress reliever. This is when I got to find that place to get in and, 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 you know, this is my therapy. You know what I mean? When I get in the studio and I make those records and I listen back to them, I'll be like, damn, like, that's it. You know what I mean? Right. And, and, and this makes you want to go harder. And even me just naming this joint, Chop It Out 3, it was setting the bar. Right, right, right. Because I already knew what that was, playing with fly, that's playing fire. Right, right, right. So it was almost like, you know, I wanted to bring, you know, the lighter fluid and the gasoline to the scene because I want to play with fire. Gotcha. Because I got to push myself harder. Do you feel like people forget Absolutely. about Absolutely. And the reason I say that, right, we, I was in the club in Miami over the weekend and um, they're playing all the new music, all the new music. And it was cool, you know, you right. do a little bop. And then when he played that who that, and right. I'm like, oh, it was like that feeling was yeah, bad. That, like, that who that is an instant classic. And then it was like, dude, I'm the realest nigga in here. Yeah. And then that shit, you be like, oh shit, you forget. Right, right. Now that who that is a instant classic, but it, it brings people back full circle to, you know, what they love. You right. know what I'm saying? So you know, you could always like they say that what the catchphrase is is often imitated but never duplicated, or right. vice versa, or whatever. But when when you hear that authentic. Jeezy music is just like you know what that is because mm-hmm. they came from a real place. So I think like with a lot of cats now, you know they put out you know joints, but you know they they kind of they're not timeless. Mm-hmm. And I just because I think that's the way they're going about it. But that's on them. But for me, when I'm writing these records, you know I'm putting real thought into them and right. I'm putting my reputation and my integrity on it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So who that to me, when I wrote that, I knew what that was. I called Shorty Red. I was like, yo, we're going to do the video like this. And I'm well, Whatever color I wear, you're going to wear. And, you know, I want you to have the beat machine and all, because I, I saw it. Right. And I, and I knew what it was. And it's like, and the rec- by the way, the re- that record was done. I called him after the fact. And I was like, I want you to say, you know, Shorty Red on the track. Right, right, right. That, you know what I mean? And, and, and we put the whole thing together. So, when you see it now, right now to this day, you know what I'm saying, you just gotta respect it because you know it was a whole thought process behind it. But the record is timeless, mm. and you could do that record on any coast, like, right? You absolutely, know what I'm saying right. that's what I think makes it great. You know what I mean? And even going back to, you know, the first Trap or Die to the Recession, which I think who that came off of to Trap or Die Three, I I feel like those are my best bodies of work. 
You know what I'm saying? Because gotcha. that's when I had to push myself to the limit. And and, and if and it feel good, man, to just even have a whole body of work that's like you can damn near do the whole thing from front to back. Absolutely. And that's what I'm looking forward to. Absolutely. Now now with this era, they call it the mumble rap era. Right. Right. right where right. where I guess the lyrics don't matter as much. Right. Do you feel like you, you, you have to dumb yourself down a little bit because it's like it I seems feel like, like a lot do, of stuff is easy. I feel like you gotta do what you gotta do. But I, I've been in the room and people be like, you know, I'm like, I'm gonna change that line. It's like, why would you do that? But my whole thing is I don't, you know, I'm a man of respect. I don't wanna be, you know, 10, 15 years down the line and I'm in the park, you know, with my daughter and somebody's like, yeah, that's that's that corny rapper that used to rap. <laughs> you know <what> I'm saying? <laughs> so that's why I'm serious about what I do because gotcha. it's almost like, you know what I'm saying? You want it to be forever. It's your legacy. Right. You know, you think of people like, you know, Hove and uh, certain people that just really just, do what they do. They're very particular about what they say. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's for real. Right. So you don't want to be the guy that's just known for just doing anything. Because I've been in the studio with people, man, they do like 15 songs in 10 minutes. You're looking like... <laughs> it like, sound like 15 like, songs in 10 minutes. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> You're like, wow, all right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and me, I, I cut a record and, you know what I'm saying, and, you know, a record or two and ride to him and live with him. Like, okay, I like that, I like that. Maybe I should change this or... You know, I'm going to stack this part. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I, I do I do my music like a single would. Like, I go in, I layer it, I put this on it. I, I want to mix a certain way because I know how it's supposed to feel. Right. And, um, you know, I think that's important when you're talking about stuff being timeless because you got to really know your craft. You got to really know when it's a complete gotcha. thing. You know what I'm saying? And even with this whole process, it's like we didn't really make it in no actually we was in a big studio but we was in the smallest room right <laughs> you know what I'm saying we, right. was in the, we, we was in the room if you ain't got a budget you know what I mean we was in the smallest room four people can fit in there and um, we were just grinding it out but I knew after every song I was like yeah we on to something this is it alright right. I, I want one person to mix it gotcha I want you know it, it, cause I wanted to tell this story and putting the track listing together was real cause it was gotcha. like I want the intro to feel like this I want the last song to be like that. And uh, the last time I had that feeling was with the Recession album. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I knew when I was done. I knew when I started and I knew I was done. Gotcha. And with this, I knew when I was done. When I did the last record, I was like, we're done. We got to do no more. All right, well, let's get into some music yeah. now. The album, October 28th, Jeezy's yeah. in the building. What we get into? What you want to get into, Jeezy? Let's the get into it. on you, baby. What you want? G-Wagon? You got, you know, if you got all that. Let's get, let's get the, uh, if we, we got all that. We'll get to that all in or the, or the joint with French. Yeah, let's, crazy. let's do it with, with French first. Trap or Die Jeezy. 3. Pre-order, pre-order right now on iTunes or at jeezyshop.com. Man, that sound like the streets. Right I like there. that. Mm-hmm. That, that, that give me that feeling again. That feel good. That street feeling again. Yeah, that feel good, man. Now, how'd you hook up with French? Why'd you Why'd you pick French for for, for the album? I mean, I felt like you know, me and French had did a you know a gang of records, you know, back and forth. You know what I'm saying? We we, we talk all the time. And I, when I when I did that record, I, I was like, yo, I want to keep this record. I want to put French on it. And when he sent the verse back, I was like, yo, that's it. That's it. Yeah. And it, it, it just feel, you know, if you know me, we, we love the party, man. You know, me and Fritz, you know, he's from up north, from down south, but you know, we, we love the party. French from everywhere. French right. be traveling, <laughs> he be moving. French be moving. Right. So it, it just, you know, it only made sense. You know what I'm saying? And um, you know, if you, if you just really listen to, you know, the body of work, like all that, like, you know, it's, it's just one big party, man. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, there's a lot of, you know, that motivation, that, that right. snow talk. You know what I mean? That's that. That's that feel good. Right, right, right. That's what people want to do. They want to feel good when they listen to that, you know, that straight drop. And I just feel like, you know, just this time around, it's just everything's fresh. It's all there. Right. You know what I mean? Like my, my, my man Bankroll says, it's all there. Now, now, um, your first single has Bankroll. And I, I just right. want to say something before we go on that. I was telling Natina, who works for the label earlier, I was like, Jeezy didn't change so much from the first time I met Jeezy. Right. The first time Jeezy, you was reserved, quiet. Right, right. If you asked Jeezy a question, Jeezy thought he was he was still in the drug game. He'd right. Be like, Jeezy, <laughs> what do you think about the album? Good. Right, right, right. Jeezy, what, what's what's up? What, what you doing next? Right. Nothing. I'd be like, damn it, Jeezy. <laughs> you open up so what got you to open up so much? Cause I mean, you know, it was my homies telling me, like, yo, man, you do realize you're not in the street no more. <laughs> yo. you, you do realize that, you know, people around the world love you for what you do. And, and you know, you know, I just always been in that mind state that when you be asked questions, you're being interrogated. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And I was always brought up to tell people less and say less and listen more. Right. But when I started really understanding that, you know, this is who I am, this is who I'm gonna be, mm-hmm. you know, I don't mind you know, I'm I'm smart enough to not to say, you know, nothing crazy that has right, anything right, right, right. to do with my past is gonna 
put me in the blender. Right, gotcha, gotcha, <laughs> you know what I'm gotcha, saying? gotcha. So, so now it's like, it's cool. It's like, no, you ask me questions. It's like, yo, man, because I feel good right. about what's going on. You know, life's good. You know, you know, you know, everything is good. So it's like when the music is great, you know what I'm saying? You was an artist. You just happy. You know? Right, right, right. You want to tell people about it. You know what I mean? You Absolutely. Wanna, you want to spread the word because it's like your hard work. It's like, no, nah, we got them this time. Gotcha. Yeah. It's, so, you know, even, you know, now when I'm doing interviews, you know what I mean? It's real question. But by the way, a lot of that in the beginning wasn't music questions they was asking me too, just so you know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? It was I like, mean, so what did you do? I mean, it's like, hey, man, I ain't do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know nobody. I ain't seen nothing. You know what I mean? I ain't touched nothing. <laughs> and that's what a lot of it was. It was like in the beginning, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, you know, I came straight from the street. So for me, you know, you just had to learn how to deal with the, the artistry and the fame. You know what right. I mean? It took me a while to be comfortable with it. People taking pictures in the club, you know what I mean? Like, who is that? It's feds. I'm gonna tell you a funny story. Even today, I was in the gym this morning. I told my man, I was like, yo, man, I'm in the gym. I see this other dude going hard on the elliptical like me, but he's an older dude. Right. And um, this is just let you know how my mind works. So, uh, you know, when I get off, I hit about an hour, bam. I know he probably hit about 45. Right. I seen him hop off. And his T-shirt said the director of the FBI, and I just ran the other way. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, shit. <laughs> like, I just let you know how my mind works. I was like, oh man. Jesus, just to get him out, just to get just to stop. <laughs> and, and you know, but you know now, man, it just you know more so. It just you know you gotta accept when you, when, when you're really a, a star, or, uh, uh, you know, just you know, just a trap star, somebody that people love what you do for real, and it's just like they want to know, right? You know what I'm saying? And it's like you know, it's, it's, it's your you know, obligation and your duty to let people know enough about because people don't really see me. I move like, right. you know what I mean? I move like ghosts from power. You know what Absolutely. I'm saying? I'm, I'm always going to be in that, that three-piece suit, but if you get it wrong, I'm going to all black that thing out with gotcha. the scully. Gotcha, You feel me? That's that's how I'm living. But, um, you know, I just feel like when you open up just enough, you know, it, it, it lets people inside your world and, mm -hmm. and it makes them appreciate you more because all they know is your music. Right. They're like, God damn, my nigga, you sold a million this and, you know what I mean? You counted $10 million dollars 30 million times it's like Absolutely. okay but what else about you should I like and then, when you conversate they just see your mind so I had a dude tell me that day he's like yo I like your music but I like your mind more and I'm just like okay I get that cause people don't you know people don't get that side of you especially right. with the last album they get to see a different side of not right. just the trap or die side right, or the right, street right, side right. they also get a side of damn this nigga really cares about the community or right, this nigga right, really right. tries to uplift people Right, right. you know right. they don't really get that side Right. but you know your first single featured uh, Bankroll yeah and he passed away. Right. Now tell us about how that single came about and why you still decided to put it out even um, though he was I just felt like it was more so about keeping the legacy alive, man. Like, you know, Fresh was our little brother. He was our guy. He was next up, no doubt. Mm -hmm. I was ready to give him, you know, you know, the torch and all the game mm -hmm. that um he needed because he was just a he was just a genuine dude. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He was really like from it. You know what I mean? So to see him come up and de rich was uh, his producer, which D. Rich came under up under the uh, tutelage of Shorty Red, which is my producer. Right. And uh, a lot of what D. Rich was doing, like even D. Rich produced Who That, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So a lot of what D. Rich was doing, him and Fresh was, you know, building their own thing. And I'm gotcha. just like, y'all close. You know what I'm saying? So I really want to come in and help y'all orchestrate it so we can take it the way y'all want to go. Because I remember having the last conversation with Fresh. He was, uh, this was after Life of a Hot Boy 1. He didn't want to do two. And I was like, you should do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You are a, a a town hot boy. You know, you don't have to be from New Orleans to be a hot boy. But right. That's that's who you are. You run around with a bandana on you around your neck. You ain't got no shirt on. I'm like, where your shirt at, nigga? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's who he was. And he was like, you know what? I'm I'm gonna do it. And um, even with this record, I just felt like you know Atlanta needed that. The South needed that. The right. streets needed that. You know, his legacy needed that. You know, D Rich needed that. We needed that. And um, we all knew what it was. You know when it was there but just to see people appreciate that shit it's just like and I'm telling you man like you know I'll put out a lot of songs but you know the streets standing behind this one like yeah right, <laughs> this, right, this right. our anthem you know and it, it makes sense it's all there it means a lot to it, right. it, means, <laughs> you know a mean? lot to it, it. means a lot to the legacy and it means a lot to the city so I'm just happy to see people appreciate you know real street music right absolutely you know what I mean not the you know the music you put together because you feel like it's gonna get played in the club. We never knew it was gonna get played at. We didn't care. Right. We just wanted people to hear it. And um, you know, even the going back and forth, and you know, just what we talking about. It's just so serious and real, but it just sounds, 
you know, just so fresh. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, you know, Scott Dweller blind and ain't seeing this shit. You Absolutely. know what I mean? Like, that's, that's, that sounds cool to me. I would love to have one of those watches. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That sounds like, you know what I mean? That's that talk. Absolutely. That's that motivation. But that's what I miss, that's what I miss in the game. I miss that, that, that talk. Right. What I was raised on. You know what I mean? Right, because right, right. when I was raised, I couldn't afford it. Right. So it was, it was... It was there, but now when I can't afford it, right. I like to hear that talk right, now right. because now it's a different feeling. Yeah, it make you feel like it. That's what yeah. that's what we say in Atlanta, looking like it. You looking like it. I'm looking like it. And um, look, man, just the fact that you know, and he he was the guy from the streets. Like him and Dobie was the hardest cats I ever heard. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, and, and even when I look back at what happened, I'm like, damn, it's crazy. But they was hard, right? Like they was raw. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and just to be able to be a part of. You know his legacy. Even when we shot the video, we went to his neighborhood. Mm-hmm. It was he brought his mama out, his grandma, his cousins, mm-hmm. his son, his nephew, his, all his artists. You know his stepdad. And we just had a celebration. Right. But that to that to me, that's what you do when 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 you really rock with somebody. Absolutely. You you keep it going, and, and you know they bouncing. You know they they got a lot of stuff going on now. So I just commend them on that. You know what I'm saying? Because you know had the situation been different, I know he would have done that for me. You excited about this album? Yeah. What makes you so excited about this album? I mean, you seem happy, man. Like yeah, I'm, Jeezy <laughs> seems happy. I mean, I tell you, like you know, everything's good, man. But you know, when the music is great, it, it just you know, I'm an artist at right. the end of the day, and I, I love what I do. So I like to be appreciated for my hard work. And I just feel like you know, a lot of people out there like Kenny Pull it, but like this is it. Right. That straight drop. It's like you know when you used to get that bag back in the day. Right. Well, you knew it was straight drop. Right. You already knew what it was. You couldn't wait to get it off, and that's how I feel about. You know this 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 album and this project is just like I'm ready, like I can't wait. You know what I'm saying? Like two weeks is too long to be honest. With you. <laughs> now let's <laughs> you talk. Let's talk about Shorty Low. What does Shorty right. Low mean to you? I mean, he had one of your biggest sixteens. Right. Came from Shorty Low. Record. Right. And it, it, and 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 another was uh was a part of his click was the Fable record. The Fable record, right? Uh, Geet up. I mean, like Shorty Low was the you know it was the originators of snap music, mm-hmm. but the, the, this you know as a CEO. And what he had going on is their own thing, mm-hmm. you know. And they just did it different, you know what I mean. And I respected that because he didn't just do what everybody else in the city was doing. Mm-hmm. You know, their music was party, it was dance, it was, you know, feeling good. It was just capping a different way, right? You know, and they, and they had melodies back. He, Cause even Shorty Low had melodies back then mm-hmm. that you know people didn't really have. And I remember hearing, um, they know, uh. I was at the radio station V103 doing the interview and I heard it and I was like, yo, that's a new Shorty Low record. And I just remember going outside, texting him like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Were you ready for the remix? But to me, you know, Shorty Low was just, he was real Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Like he was a real West Side cat that was really out of the streets and really trying to figure it out and really trying to help, you know, his team. You know, he was right. the one that really had a studio in the hood, right. on the block. Mm-hmm. He was the dude you was going to see out every night at the Blue Flame. You know what I'm saying? Especially on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, Wednesdays when it's really cracking. And, you know, it was just L.O. You right. know what I mean? You saw him. It was always G. You know, I just knew him for being a great father and, you know, just stuff like that. But at the same time, you know, he was he was Atlanta. Like, he was a, he, he was really that dude on the west side. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So, you know, just to even, you know, hear and see him pass, you know, I hate to see that. But I'm just glad that, you know, he left us with his music. Right. And his legacy, you know, just to remind us, you know, how great he really was and how great you know of a of a effort he gave it because we all from the hood mm-hmm. we're not we're not musicians and artists and we ain't come up and you know what i mean like we we just trying to figure it out Absolutely. <laughs> you know what i'm saying Absolutely. so for us to even be in a position to you know to, to make great music and represent the city like that you know what i'm saying i just thought it was you know crazy i remember him coming out on birthday bash a couple of times and doing his thing and it's just like you know that's low but low was a real street cat you know mm-hmm. what i mean and and and, and i think you know, and, and by the way, you know, I feel him because, you know, I was a CEO as well. I wasn't really the artist. Mm-hmm. I just got put in that position where I had to be the artist. And I know he was a CEO. Mm-hmm. And he, you know, making records. I'm just like, yo, this nigking making his. Yeah, <laughs> you absolutely. Know what I'm so, um, and I remember doing the remix for him to, um, to They Know and sending him the verse. Mm-hmm. And he was Did you know that me. verse was going to be that big? Yeah, because I really, I mean, I, listen, man, I heard that song. It was nowhere in the hell. <laughs> I'm going to give him the hardest No, no disrespect version. to anybody else on right, the remix Right But that's the only verse right, that you hit Right And it's crazy because You know I wrote it And I did it I wrote that And I wrote the uh, Rocco uh, I'm going to do me verse in the same night mm-hmm. 
and I remember just playing it back and forth, and I was like, yo, I like the Rocco verse, but I like, like, dude, this is crazy, mm -hmm. right? And um, I gave it to him, and then I, I'm gonna keep it real, you know what I'm saying? I got, you know what I'm saying? What, what do they say? Burning holes in your pockets. He couldn't put the remix out fast enough, so I just kind of <laughs> slid that thing on out. You oh, know you slid it out, just let it out. Absolutely. So that's why when you hear one version of it, it just got me it on it. It just that. got you on right. it. Right. And then he put everybody else on it. Gotcha. But he wasn't even triple, though. He was like, I already know. But I was like, yo, man. And I was trying to figure out who made the beat. Because the horns, you know, I love horns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, yo, who made this shit? And, you know, I, I couldn't get it out of, you know what I mean? But at the same time, um, you know, even now to this day, I still do that record on stage and people still go crazy. And when we was at the Formation Tour in Atlanta and Beyonce, you know, you know, did it to show love, I was just like, wow. Yeah, that's big. That was big. <laughs> you know what I'm that saying? I'm like, okay. Now what what gave you that in that that investment mind, that entrepreneur mind? Because right. they say you, you you're trying to buy half of Atlanta. Right. You know, <laughs> you were one of the first artists to endorse liquor. Right, right. Way, right. way, 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 way right, before. Right, right. What gave you what gave you that mindset? I'm a hustler. You know what I'm saying? I just feel like you gotta you gotta expand your portfolio. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? You never should put all your things in one basket. You know right. what I'm saying? And it's just like this is my art and my craft, but you already know how the music business is. It ain't you know, it ain't you know, it ain't like that. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and, and we already saw what Puff and Jay did for, you know, for, for up north. But, you know, we yet to have somebody come out of Atlanta this, or the South that's worth a billion dollars. And that's my goal. Like, I'm, 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 I'm working on that. And it's right, just like, gotcha. you got to spread yourself around and do other things because the music is the vehicle. But at the same time, you got to still have a hustler mentality. And if you're a hustler, you're going to do whatever you need to do to meet your goal or meet your quota. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you ain't just, like, stuck in a box just because you know people telling you you're an artist you know what i mean so that's my thing by the way that's what keeps me you know you say i'm happy that's what keeps me saying it's just like i do other things that i'm excited about mm -hmm. i love the music i'm gonna do that you know until i can't but it's just like when i bust situations and people don't know and it's just like you're sitting down and they're like yeah you know you're an artist and i'm looking at niggas like you crazy <laughs> like do you know what i really <laughs> you know what i'm saying right. do you know what my portfolio's like yeah have you, have you really just sat down and that's because you know I strive for that, you know, right. and, I, and I like that because that brings that brings respect. Because gotcha. you're not just looked at as a, a rapper, you know. When you stereotype rappers, they just think you sipping lean out of cup and smoking weed all day. Right. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like, nah. It's, you know, some of us really be on our shit. Gotcha. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like you know, like yourself. Like you know, you like you know, you you you, you do, you know, DJ Stem Club. But it, it ain't no telling what else you got going right. on. That's Absolutely. why you able to live the way you live because. You ain't just putting yourself in one box. Yeah, but that's, that's like, the passion. The passion for right. me is, is to to do more than what people expect. Right, right, right. You know what right, I mean? Right. Whether it's uh, the juice bar or the right. soda company or the, right. or the real estate, I just want to do more. And I want right. to teach my kids how to do it because nobody taught me. Right. I was the first one. So being able to teach them and telling them to work out the numbers on a, on a property and, right, and, and right, if right. I'm going to make my money back, right. that's my enjoyment. That's right. what I get a kick out of now. Right. You know what I mean? is that. When that's the album comes out. That, spreading that love, baby. Yeah. Album comes out October 28th. 28th. You Make know sure you is. go pick it up. Pre-order pre right, right now. now. iTunes. If you can't get the iTunes, go to jeezyshop.com. Matter of fact, if you're riding with me and you're rolling with me, that's what I need you to do. When you when you post a picture up, put three fingers in the air. Uh, hashtag TD3. Hashtag Snow Season. And we'll talk about that later on. But uh, look, man, shouts out to everybody that's rocking with me, man. And TD3, man, you already know the first trap of die is, so you can only imagine they say, they say things get better with time. I'm going to let you tell me. Okay. <laughs> How Enough about said. that? Enough said. <laughs> Owl Mount, October 28th. Let's get yeah. into the last show. What are we getting into? Let's go with that. Let them know.